Hey guys and welcome back. Today I wanted to actually go through a design process that I went for creating our Limbo creature that's going to appear in one of the levels throughout our game. Uh, if you don't know, hi my name is Roche, I'm one of the lead designers here at Lucid Rain Studios and welcome for our second devlog I think uh, on our journey to creating our game in Furious. All right, let's dive into the nitty gritty of the creature design process. Typically, it all begins with the concept art, right? So our vision was to create a headless creature haunting the limbo landscape, kind of like a humanoid figure ex with exaggerated limbs and movements. I translated these concepts into action using ZBrush and starting with the fundamental shape first. To achieve that lean otherworldly feel, I referenced basic human anatomy. Sculpting is a craft I've only honed over a short period of time, and I'll tell you now, like getting that initial shape just right is always the biggest challenge. For this creature, I wanted to depart from normal human bone structures while maintaining an anatomical coherence. <laughs> anatomical coherence. It's a delicate balance, blending familiarity with the alien. Drawing from my understanding of basic human biology, I introduced subtle tweaks to bring in an otherworldly essence to this creature. Now moving from the basic shape to intricate details, I switched to a grey shaded view for better visibility. Since most of the details come from the skin surface, it was crucial to refine every nuance. During the bone definition phase, inspiration struck me, and I envisioned a surface with the skin revealing the underlying muscle layers. Testing this idea with thin line streaks and traditional muscle anatomy, the end result exceeded my expectations. I was actually really happy with this. But here's the kicker, I didn't actually use any fancy paid brushes. Everything you see from this creature that I created was using the standard ZBrush tools. And I really wanted to use this so that it can show off to everyone that you can you don't need to pay for other brushes. With the design taking the shape I wanted, the final touches involved to adding subtle skin details. Little bumps here and there, injecting that extra dash of character into this already eerie creature. All right, let's dive into the next part of the process. And let's be honest, many artists, including myself, find UV mapping to be quite tedious. But don't worry, I'm gonna share some tools and techniques that I use to make the setup more manageable. First up, we have the not so glamorous task of retopologizing the model. Now, you can do this manually, but as an indie developer, we need to kind of find creative ways and solutions to streamline this workflow without compromising quality. That's where a handy add-on called Quad Remesher comes into play. I'll drop the link below because I'm all for sharing these kind of resources. This tool smartly auto retopologizes the model, allowing you to control the amount of vertices that your retopology needs to have. While it might need some tweaking, it gets the job done effectively. Once that's done, it's all about cutting my hard work in half and mirroring the model. This ensures that when I mark the seams, it's mirrored exactly on the other side. Now the key to good unwraps is the difference between a stretchy versus non-stretchy textures. We definitely want to avoid the former, but there's this weird quirky issue that keeps popping up during unwrapping the hand where one finger just inexplicably explodes for some reason. It's also got this really odd shape and I can't really figure out why. After some online detective work, I realized I was not alone in the struggle. Blender was the culprit behind this weird finger enlargement. With unwrapping challenges behind us, let's move on to something more exciting. All right, let's move on to texturing. Uh, I find this to be a crucial phase in the design process. As many of you know, I use Substance Painter for the versatility and user-friendly interface. Although programs like Blender and Marmoset Toolback are also good options. Given that my focus is primarily on the creature skin, I didn't need to go crazy into the complexity of the model. Just like with human skin, it's not overly intricate on the surface, but it's the subtle details that build the character. I experimented with three variations. 
the first attempt to, to mimic the concept's dark tones. But it proved, again, just too dark, obscuring the intricate details that I had sculpted. The second drew loose inspiration from the Xenomorph from Aliens, and the third aimed to blend the first two designs out, but once again, the darkness overshadowed the details. In the end, I opted for the second design, just because it showcased the creature's details more effectively. So let's break up this material. I started with a pinkish base layer, adding dark splotches for contrast. Highlighting the edges added a depth while undertones emphasize the protruding bone structure. Additional dark spots enhance the desired details and lighter skin details balance the overall composition. A final layer of dark skin details brought the whole thing together. For the nails, I kind of just got lazy and chose the stylized bone smart material provided by Substance. Though it may not be a perfect fit, it kind of just serves its purpose for now. And there you have it, my creature now resembles something straight out of like a Lovecraftian horror movie. Okay, let's talk animations. Honestly, I'm gonna be upfront about it, I really, 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 really don't enjoy animating. The whole process of ensuring your rig works flawlessly, to wrestling with the correct mesh weighting, to avoiding those quirky animation bugs, it's not my favorite thing to do. But you know what, there is some satisfaction in finishing a clean animation set. Now to put things into perspective, I kicked off my workload by creating a custom control rig for our creature. Sure I could have gone with the standard UE4 mannequin control scheme, as many Unreal devs on YouTube would often suggest, but this creature being the NPC with unique animation mechanics planned for later in the game needed a much more custom touch. Besides, I figured it was high time that I learned how to create custom rigs for future projects. With the rig in place, it was time to dive into crafting the animations. Currently, I've only made a walking animation for testing purposes, but more creature movements are in the pipeline. I aimed for seamless animations, opting to create a full 360 degree movement animation set. I picked up a lot of invaluable tips from a Umidi course I found online, I'll leave the link below. And in this, I was focusing a lot on using Blender's non-linear animation track, or NLA for short. It's just a fancy term for layering animations and providing a more flexible way to build animation sets that isn't destructible. After building what feels like an ungodly number of walking animation sets, like this is just too much, but it, it was needed. The final step was to create a blend space in Unreal and import each animation. Now with that being done, the animation work is checked off the list. Now all that's left is to tackle the programming side of things. And if I'm being honest, I'm already feeling a little bit overworked. This is just one creature that we're making. But this is part of the journey, right? Yeah, I know I said I was dreading this, but let's talk about, surprisingly, the easiest part of this whole process, AI programming. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly a programming whiz, that's why I've got Riccardi here to basically take care of all the programming stuff for the game. But when I approached him with the request of doing the programming AI for our creature, his response was, no. This cheeky little sh So with a sense of regret and determination, I delved into the vast ocean of YouTube tutorials and started absorbing a bunch of information that I'll probably forget in the next week. I learned how to program a basic AI for our creature and surprisingly, it all worked out, mostly. I didn't run into too many problems as I had anticipated, thanks to some excellent tutorials from Ryan Laley, especially his AI playlist, which I'll link below. So what I managed to do was make my creature patrol randomly, and when it spots me, it walks directly towards me. If it loses sight of me, it seamlessly transitions back into kind of like a patrolling animation. It's not looking too shabby, right? It didn't take too much really, I would say maybe about a week to set everything up. And that involves the character blueprint, the behavior tree, perception system, detectors, hearing perception, a patrol path, and a few other things. Nothing too crazy. It was easy, right? With that being done, I can now rest easy just knowing that I successfully created this NPC from start to finish without running into too many issues. And I managed to do that with keeping my sanity intact.
and that's it. That's how I created the limbo creature for our game. And you know, there was there was a lot that I didn't include in this video. It wasn't meant to be drawn out, but I really wanted to show a simplified process of using a pipeline and how it can evolve as you slowly create your characters, or in my case, like a creature for your games. So if you are looking forward to support us and development of our game, please feel free to subscribe and like because it does actually help. And for me, if you guys can leave some comments, if you want to know a little bit more about what I'm trying to figure out in terms of uh, 3D design for video games, uh, feel free to drop me a, a comment, it really helps. And then lastly, one of the biggest ways you can help us out is if you guys go ahead and wishlist our game. We are very early into development and we plan on creating these devlogs to really just trying to show off how that's looking on our end as three indie devs and how we were working together and figuring this out. So um, yeah, wish listening our game would help tremendously. But thanks for sticking around and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.